Uh, in this tutorial, we are going to talk about some examples of data structures. In the previous tutorial, we learned what data structures are and what abstract data types are. Uh, in this tutorial, we are going to talk about uh, some example data structures. Um, <clears throat> If you haven't watched the previous tutorial, you should actually, you know, watch that tutorial first so that you know what a data structure is and what an abstract data type is. Okay, so the examples of data structures. Um, essentially, actually, even something, uh, some, uh, even a data type as simple as an integer is actually an abstract data type. Because if you think about it, I mean, an integer is a is an integer. You know, I mean, mathematic it has a mathematical definition, and and it has operations defined on it like addition and subtraction and stuff like that. So an integer is definitely an abstract data type. Um, an integer, when it is represented as you know four bytes, for example, you know that you know we carve out four bytes in the memory, and we store the integer as bits that makes it a data structure this is now we are talking about the representation of of integer the storage and organization of an integer so that makes it a data structure and you know then there are algorithms to add two integers together right that you take this byte and add this byte and then there is a carry and then you add another byte and then so on so there are algorithms to add, subtract, multiply, divide integers. So so it definitely satisfies the condition. The thing is that you know it's so so trivial that we don't you know we don't consider integer as data structure. We don't talk to, about it as a data structure because it's so simple and trivial. I guess the the smallest or the simplest form of data structure that you know that is you know not too simple and not you know uh, it's that we can actually start considering a data structure is an array. An array essentially is a data structure because we are saying that an array is uh, going to be a collection of elements, right, stored in memory in the, in the concept, um, in, um, what should I say, in like consecutive, consecutive bytes, right? In the consecutive memory, it's not like you know one element is stored in one part of the memory and the other element is stored in the other part of the memory. No, it's like all the elements are consecutive, store is consecutively stored in the memory. So in in a sequence, right, one after the other, back to back. So this we are talking about the representation. Actually, essentially, what array is doing is a is is you know trying to uh, uh, store, uh, trying to implement a list of something right that's a that's what it's trying to do the the ADT list right so 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 array is definitely a data structure what else is a data structure you know something called linked list linked list again as the name, name suggests is it you know it's the it's a representation of a list the a particular way of of storing the elements of a list it that, that's what a linked list is so a linked list is definitely a data structure okay and we will we will talk about linked list in the in the subsequent tutorials uh, in in a pretty pretty much pretty good detail actually but you know just just as an introduction what linked list is it's it's uh, it's you know in array all the elements the, con the one of the features or properties of array is that all the elements in an array are you know are consecutive in memory they are back to back in memory in linked list that's not the case every element called a node is actually can be located anywhere in the memory okay so you know if this is an element and then this has an element they are not consecutive in the memory. They are not back to back in the memory. And then this is an element, you know, it, these could be integers. If these are integers, this, this, this could be integer. If we are talking about a list of integers, then these are integers. If you are talking about a list of, uh, I don't know, strings, you know, list of names, then these are, you know, each one of them is a, is a string and they are names and so on. And 
the how they are related or linked together using pointers so we start with the with one pointer and make it point to the first element and then the first element at the end has a next pointer and we make that point to the next element and then this one has the next pointer and it points to the next element and so on until we reach the last element whose next pointer is pointing to nothing it's a null pointer if you remember what pointers are you would understand what I'm talking about and if you if you don't know what pointers are you need to go back and and watch uh, the tutorials on pointers there are you know quite a few tutorials that I made so you could go in and look them up so that's the linked list it's it's a data structure it's a way of storing a list so it satisfies the definition of data structures and there are operations defined on it for example you know how to insert an element in the middle of a list okay like somewhere here if you want to store it how do you do that okay how to traverse through the list how to sort the, this list and so on um, and then there are different variations of linked lists also so we are not going to talk about those you know um, then what we have is um, well we, we will we will talk about them in the subsequent tutorials we are not going to talk about them in, in this tutorial the next is a tree for example you know a tree is a very interesting data structure it's a little bit more complicated than linked list but it's it's an awesome data structure you know a lot of time you know you have data in a tree structure right so you have a node you know and then there are other nodes which are somehow linked to this node and then each one of them may have other nodes which are linked together and then another node and then another node and then these may have other nodes and so on okay so this 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 if if your data is organized like this then you have a tree structure you need in order to represent your data you need trees you need the tree data structure um, for example you know the directory structure you know there are directories and then inside the directories there are files right and some of them are directories so inside them there are files and some of them are directories so inside them there could be files so you see that the directory structure is an excellent example of a tree structure you know and and to some extent for example you know your uh, your uh, generation tree is also a tree that, that's why it's called tree right kind of it's kind of one of the properties of tree here tree data structure is that every node has one and only one parent so this this is the parent of these four nodes okay and and you know and this is the parent of these three nodes and so on except for the root node which does not have any parent and that's the start of the tree the root of the tree okay it's you know it's it doesn't look like tree unless you you turn it around if you if you if you turn this whole thing around then it will look like a tree right so with this thing as the root and with all these as the as the you know branches and stuff and and sure enough that's why there it's called root and these are called branches and the end points are just like in a tree you know the, the notes which don't have any 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 children those notes are called leaves just like the leaves in the tree anyway and then we have something called graph it's even more complicated than trees graph is you know is again it has nodes but then all these nodes are are connected together with no you know with no restrictions as such in general right like here there were restrictions what were the restriction that every every node has a parent and only one and only one parent except the root node which doesn't have any parent so you cannot have like you cannot have a relationship like this okay that's not a tree anymore because this node has two parents so it's not a tree 
anymore. What is it? It's a graph now. Now this is a graph. In graph, any node could be linked to any number of other nodes. And that's what makes it in, into a graph. So because, you know, there are more paths available, it makes it more complex. And, you know, really, it's it's not more complex, but it's it's it's, it's a different data structure, I should say that, you know. This is tree and this is data, you know, this is graph. It's relatively hard to implement this as opposed to this, but you know, it's that's all it is. So this is this is called graph, and graphs can have different different kind of uh, there can be different kind of graphs. For example, you know, uh, cyclic graph. For example, directed graph. Directed graphs are the ones where there is not only not only that the no nodes are linked, but there is some kind of relationship going from one node to another. For example, you know, this could be dependency. This node depends upon this node. Okay. And similarly, you know, this node depends upon this node and so on. Okay. So some kind of relationship, you know, that this node comes first and then this co node comes next. Okay. There is some kind of relationship going on. So there is this directed, the concept of direction here, you know, it's not just linked together. They are directional. So that's called a directional graph, you know, and th though if you don't have directions, it's called, a, you know, a directed graph. And then there, because of the directions, there is a concept of flow, right? So you go from here to here and then here to here. And then if you go from here to here, then it, this is a cycle. So it's a cyclic graph. And if you, instead of going from here to here, let's see. If you go from here to here, so you can see there is no cycle here. So it's an acyclic graph, acyclic di directed graph, ADG. It's an awesome graph. It's, a, it's an awesome data structure. It's, you know, it, there are lots of problems around us, lo lots of data around us, which can be represented like this, ADG. So anyway, so these are all different kinds of data structures. So keep watching and don't forget to visit c++tutor.com and give a thumbs up if you like this tutorial. Thank you so much.